I'm Matt Beecher in San Francisco for NAREACH REIT World, our 2018 annual conference. Joining me today is Paul Pittman, Chairman and CEO of Farmland Partners. Paul, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Now, social media and anonymous blogs pose a real reputational risk for all companies, something that Farmland Partners had to deal with earlier this year. What can you learn from that type of situation and how can the company and its shareholders come out of it in a better place? Well, uh, it's, it's hard to answer how you'll come out of it in a better place. I mean, what happened to us is a anonymous party accumulated a very large uh, short position through the use of put options in our stock and then wrote an article that is absolutely false. For example, said we were insolvent. Well, how can you be insolvent if you own a billion to a farmland and you have 540 million of debt? It's just, I mean, it's not the definition of insolvency. And it took our stock down 40 some percent in one day. And a lot of people got hurt. Uh, you know, people have lost quite a bit of money. Uh, we are pursuing that party. Uh, we've asked uh, federal law enforcement to get involved in pursuing that party. We believe they will. Um, it's the, the real sort of societal issue, set aside what happened to our company, is that it strikes at the very integrity of the public markets. And it makes it number one, unfair to investors, uh, number two, very difficult for the employees and the other stakeholders in a public company, um, and then finally for company founders and people like uh, me and people who have sold us farms and extremes for stock, it makes you question, why do you really want to be public? And, you know, if we're going to maintain a vibrant public capital markets, um, dishonest market manipulative behavior must be policed. And that's, you know, the one other thing I would tell uh, other CEOs and chairman of companies to keep an eye on is you should monitor unusual uh, put option activity in your stock. Uh, we, in hindsight, uh, could have seen some of this uh, being built through these put option positions that were incredibly outsized. You know, 10x of normal trading was occurring in the few days uh, before. But until you've been attacked, you don't, right. I'm not, you know, I've got a job to do. I'm not looking at the put option trading on any given day. Now, at the fundamental level, how healthy is your core business as we head into 2019? So, you know, farmland is, is almost always a healthy business in a general sense, sometimes stronger than others. And it's, it's really important that, that people don't confuse farming with farmland. Farming is risky on an annual basis. Uh, you know, largely it's a, it's a weather dependent business. Um, and whenever you have weather as one of your primary drivers of risk, you've got risk in the, in the business. But farmland is really based on a 50 year view, you know, five zero, 50 year view of global food demand and land scarcity. Well, those two key drivers are always in your favor. Um, it, it, I mean, think about farmland like uh, as compared to other real estate asset classes. There's really no substitute, okay? If, if you, you know, they're not gonna run out of locations to build a new set of suburban garden apartments or suburban office or storage, right? Or industrial, right? You can, you can add fundamentally to the supply. Other than central business district office, um, which would be like farmland, you can't add to the supply of farmland. It is a fixed universe in the world, and it's actually going down every year because every other use of land takes away farmland eventually. And lastly, there's been a lot of discussion about trade issues and the potential headwinds that might cause. What is your take on any potential concerns and how is Farmland Partners positioned in that area? Yeah, so, so the trade war, you know, the trade war that we have going on today is not, it's not good for agriculture. I wouldn't want to ever say it is. Now, if it, we come out of this where I think we will come out, it will be very good for U.S. agriculture. You know, hopefully what the administration will do is solve the problem not by turning off Chinese imports into the United States, but require the Chinese to take much more of our exports. If they do that, 
food and energy would be two really big areas of increased export activity into China. That'll be obviously very good for farmers and farmland, uh, you know, over time. The, the risk of the trade war, again, is different than I think a lot of people think. It's not that we're going to suddenly see you know, prices collapse and nobody's going to eat the soybeans and the corn and the other commodities we grow because the world's a hungry place. This stuff is getting eaten, you know, and consumed almost every year. The real risk is that if you get, if the U.S. appears over a relatively long period of time to be an, a risky or uncertain source of supply for the Chinese people in particular, the Chinese government is going to pour capital into some place like South America to improve their infrastructure and make them a stronger competitor 5, 10, 15 years down the road. And so that's really the risk. Um, so, you know, it's very important that the U.S. be seen as the preferred and most secure supplier of food. I mean, it's such a fundamental human need that if we look like we're going to use food as a weapon, you can't blame, at the end of the day, the Chinese from trying to invest in a way that gives them more market power uh, against the American farmer. Paul, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. For more from REIT World 2018, be sure to visit NARIT's website, REIT.com.